How to test a spill-resistant pressure vacuum breaker using a 3-valve differential test kit. This video is produced by Jimmy Backflow Productions. Cross-connection control and other backflow prevention testing training is available online at www.ceuplan.com. Test Sequence Step 1. Validate the static state of the assembly. The assembly should be in a static state at the time of the test. Step 2. Measure the differential pressure across the check valve. The spill-resistant pressure vacuum breaker is equipped with a spring-loaded check valve. The static differential pressure across the check valve shall be 1.0 PSID or greater. Step 3. Measure the opening point of the air inlet valve. The spill-resistant pressure vacuum breaker is also equipped with a spring-loaded air inlet valve. The opening point of the air inlet valve shall be 1.0 PSID or greater. Preliminary Steps to Testing a Spill-Resistant Pressure Vacuum Breaker Identify the backflow prevention device assembly to be tested. Determine the direction of flow. Locate the test cock and vent bleed screw. Install test cock adapter, if necessary. Some test cocks are equipped with pre-installed adapters. Teflon tape should be used when installing the adapters. Open the test cock to bleed out the air and any foreign matter. Open the bleed screw to bleed out the air, once they are flushed sufficiently. Close the test cock and vent bleed screw. Remove the hood or cover and inspect the air inlet port opening area for foreign material, insect, or obstructions. The test will be conducted using a 3-valve differential test kit. The 3-valve differential test kit control valves should be in the correct position. Prior to conducting the test, position the test kit control valves. The high and low control valves should be closed. The vent control valve should be open. Locate the high, low, and vent pressure hoses positions on the test kit. No flow validation test. The no-flow or static condition test is conducted to determine if the spill-resistant pressure vacuum breaker is in a static state at the time of the test. To evaluate the static state of the spill-resistant pressure vacuum breaker, request permission to stop the flow of water downstream. Once permission is granted, close the downstream shut-off valve. Connect the high-pressure hose to the test cock and open the test cock. The low-pressure hose and the vent hose are in a bucket. The test kit needle should be a full scale. Open the high control valve on the test kit to bleed out the air from the hose and differential pressure gauge. Once the air is removed close the high control valve. To balance the atmospheric pressure between the test kit and the spill resistant pressure vacuum breaker, wrap the low pressure hose around the test kit so that the end of the hose is at the center line with the test kit. Raise the test kit so that the center line of the test kit is level with the vent bleed screw. To evaluate the static state of the spill resistant pressure vacuum breaker, close the upstream shut off valve while observing the differential pressure gauge. If the test kit needle is holding steady, the spill resistant pressure vacuum breaker is in a static state. If the test kit needle drops to zero the pressure vacuum breaker is in a flow state. The test cannot be completed until a no-flow static state is attained. When measuring the differential pressure across the check valve, the upstream and downstream shut-off valves are closed, the high-pressure hose is connected to the open test cock, the test kit needle gauge is at full scale, the low-pressure hose and the test kit are at the same elevation as the vent bleed screw. The test kit high and low control valves are closed and the vent control valve is open. To measure the drop in the pressure across the check valve, open the vent bleed screw until water starts to discharge from the vent bleed screw. The test kit needle will start to drop as atmospheric pressure is introduced. When the water stops flowing from the vent bleed screw, Observe the test kit differential pressure gauge. The differential pressure gauge is now reading the difference in pressure across the check valve, it should be 1.0 psid or greater to pass the test.
close the vent bleed screw. Measuring the opening point of the air inlet valve. Open the upstream shut off valve. The differential pressure gauge should peg at full scale. To equalize the atmospheric pressure between the test kit and the air inlet of the spill resistant pressure vacuum breaker, the low pressure hose should be wrapped around the test kit so that the end of the hose is at the center line of the test kit. The center line of the test kit should be at the same elevation as the air inlet valve. The high pressure hose should be connected to the open test cock. Close the upstream shut off valve. To measure the opening point of the air inlet valve, the water pressure that is keeping the air inlet closed must be eliminated. To remove the water pressure, open the vent bleed screw until water starts to flow from the vent bleed screw. Open the high control valve on the test kit one quarter turn or until the needle on the gauge starts to descend. Observe the air inlet valve and the differential pressure gauge simultaneously. Watch for the air inlet valve to drop. The air inlet valve should drop before the needle on the differential pressure gauge reaches 1.0 PSID. Observe the air inlet valve to determine if it opened completely. This completes the spill resistant pressure vacuum breaker test. Return the spill resistant pressure vacuum breaker to service. Disconnect the hose. Place the hood. The spill resistant pressure vacuum breaker passes the test if all conditions are met. One the spill resistant pressure vacuum breaker was in a static state at the time of the test. Two the differential pressure across the check valve was 1.0 PSID or greater. Three the air inlet valve opened before the test kit needle reached 1.0 PSID. Record the test results. <laughs>